Hello, in this video, I'm going to show you how we can use linear algebra to balance out a chemical equation. So the chemical equation that we're working with is right here, the one that you see here. Okay, so we all remember taking um, chemistry and given one of these, right? Um, it was more of a kind of a trial and error uh, technique to get everything in balance. Okay, so I kind of like things where there's actually a systematic way to get it. Uh, and so that's how I'm going to present here. Um, and this is going to use, again, this is going to use an idea from linear algebra. All right, so, okay. Remember that the goal is to figure out how many of these, right? How many of these, how many of these, and how many of these to make everything in balance, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and write Let's say uh, x1 here, that's going to be a certain number. Uh, we need a certain number of these. I'm going to call it x2, x3 of these, and x4. Okay, so uh, again, the goal is to figure out what x1, x2, and x3, and x4 are. Okay, to put this into balance. All right, so the next thing to do is to create, uh, I'm going to go ahead and call it a storage vector. Okay, and that's where we're going to store our, our elements, okay? So I'm just gonna create that off to the side here. All right, so um, notice that in this chemical equation, there are three elements involved. We have carbon, we have hydrogen, and we have oxygen, okay? So I'm gonna put those into here, so we have carbon, Hydrogen, oxygen. Okay. So the order doesn't matter. Um, you can put hydrogen first and then carbon and oxygen, or you can put oxygen, then carbon, then hydrogen. It really doesn't matter. Okay. Again, this is just what we're going to use um, to basically store uh, the values that were given for each of these molecules. Okay. So, all right. So let's proceed from here. Okay. So looking at this one. Okay. Again, we have X1, and in this case, we have three carbons and eight hydrogens. Okay, so we're going to have three carbons, eight hydrogens, okay. again, using this format, and we don't have any oxygens. Put zero there. Next one, we have X2. Okay, we actually have a dioxide here. Okay, so there is no carbons. There, there are no hydrogens, and we have two oxygens. And then this arrow, in mathematics, that is just uh, we're treating this as an equal sign, okay? Um, and that's going to be relevant for our system, okay? And then we have X3. Uh, we have one carbon, zero hydrogens, and two oxygens. And then finally, for the water molecule, we have no carbons, two hydrogens, and one oxygen. Okay. Again, basically looking at each molecule, uh, we can come up with a uh, vector for that in terms of how many uh, elements are in each of the molecules. Okay. Um, again, using this format. Okay. All right. So that's so basically what we have. Um, is there is a system, okay, a linear system. So what we can do is we're going to set everything equal to zero. That's going to give us a homogeneous right, equation, and then from there we can solve it. Okay, so we have x one times this vector plus x two times this vector. And then I'm going to move these over. Okay, so that's going to be plus three. So I'm going to put the minus inside here. Okay. And then minus, again, this is going to be uh, plus x4. And then put the minus inside. And then all equal to the zero vector. Okay, so again, here's our system, original. Our original system, moving these over, 
okay? Uh, just subtracting it and then setting everything equal to the zero vector. Okay, so now from here, Uh, we can rewrite this. Uh, this is going to be the same thing as writing. We have three, eight, zero, 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 two, minus one, zero, minus two, and then zero, minus two, negative one. Okay. So this is this basically turns out to be the um, our coefficient matrix for the system. Okay. And then we have our variable. Okay, this is going to contain our solutions, right? So this is our solution vector, x1, x2, x3, x4. And all that, again, is equal to the zero vector. Okay. So here's our beautiful system, okay? Right. This is A. This is our solution vector. And here's our zero vector. Okay, so basically, we have the infamous homogeneous matrix system, okay? AX equal to zero. So now, here comes the fun part, um, is that we need to go ahead and solve this. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and write what I have over here. We have three, zero, minus one, zero, eight, zero, Zero minus two, zero, two, minus two, minus one. And I'm going to go ahead and just augment the zero vector onto there. All right. Okay, so let's see. Um, from here, right, what we do is we put this into. Um, what's called reduced row echelon form, right? So that's R R E F. Now, in this case, um, I would recommend using a calculator, um, and I do have a, a video that shows or that shows how to use your TI graphing calculator. Um, given a matrix, you know, you can put it into R E F form. Okay. Um, I also have the steps for this. Um, I wrote out the steps um, in some notes, and I, and that um, the link uh, the link for those notes is provided in the in the um, description of this video. Okay. So, but the important thing is that we end up getting this okay, after we do the REF. So we end up getting one zero zero minus one fourth. Zero one zero minus five fourths and zero zero one minus three fourths. Okay. Again, you can do this using your calculator. Okay, I have a video on that. Or if you're curious to see the uh, the actual row operations, uh, there's a link. In the description that shows um, that shows how to do that. Okay, so there's a link there to the to the notes for this. Okay, um, so now from here we can go ahead and solve our system. Okay. So notice that we have three pivots here. We have x1, this was what? x1, x2, x3, and then x4. Okay, so we basically have one free variable here, and the other, right, x4. x4 is our free variable, and then x1, x2, and x3 are the basic variables. Okay, so let's, right, so let x4, be equal to some parameter where that parameter is a real value. Okay, so all right, and then from there uh, we can go ahead and solve for x three. Okay, so x three. Okay, 
here. So we have x3 minus 3 fourths times x4 is equal to zero. Okay, so this means that x3 is equal to 3 fourths times x4. And that is x, that means that x3 is equal to 3 fourths times t. Okay. All right, and so we can do the same thing right, for x2. We have x2 minus 5 fourths times x4 equals to zero. So that means x2 is going to be equal to 5 fourths times x4. Well, we know x4 is t. So that means x2 is going to be equal to 5 fourths times t. And then finally, solve it for x1. Okay, we have x1 minus one fourth times x2, x4 equals to zero. So that implies that x1 is going to be equal to one fourth times x4. So x1 is going to be one fourth times t. Okay. All right, so we have x4 is equal to t, x3 is equal to three fourths t, x2 is equal to five fourths t, and x1 is equal to one fourth t. Okay. Now from there, we can go ahead and construct our solution. All right, so let's see, let me go ahead and write here. So x, our solution vector x, okay, is going to be equal to, remember, so it's x1, x2, x3, x4. Okay, so x1 was one fourth. So I'm going to go ahead and factor out the t since each one of these has t in it. So in other words, I'm going to write it in parametric form. So this is one fourth. x2 is five fourths. x3 is three fourths. And x4 is just one. All right, so this basically gives us our general solution, okay? Uh, but remember that to balance this, uh, we want the, basically the minimum set, right? We want the minimum values here uh, that are going, and also they're positive, okay? So the minimum integers here, okay? So to get that, uh, what we can do, we can look here and Basically, we're dividing right everything. We're dividing these by four. So what we can do is let t be equal to four. Okay, and so we do that. We're going to get the minimum uh, count for the, to balance this. Okay, so we're going to let t be equal to four. And so therefore, right for this uh, for this specific t, okay, we have the solution. So we're going to have one. Five, three, and four. Okay, so, all right, so basically this is what we need. Okay, so x1 will be one, x2 is five, x3 is three, and x4 is four. Okay, so let's check. We have one here. X2 is five, X3 is three, and X4 is four. All right, so let's check this. We got three carbons, that's good. Three carbons here, okay, that looks good. Eight hydrogens, eight hydrogens, right? And 10 oxygens, right? So we have six oxygens here, plus four oxygens, that gives us 10. So everything lines up, everything works out. Okay, so um, yeah, so this is a nice little application uh, for, uh, it's a nice, nice application for, um, for um, solving a system, right? Okay, All right. And basically again, just create your, your uh, storage vector, okay? And it doesn't matter the order here and then, and then from each of these molecules, you're going to have your uh, vector. And then from there, you have your homogeneous system. 
and then just basically using REF to solve this. Right? Right. So that's how we can. Um, that is a nice little way to solve a uh, or to balance a chemical equation uh, using linear algebra. Okay. So um, I will stop from here and uh, hope that everyone has a uh, wonderful day. Thank you.